Hey everyone. Um, I got a comment on a past video about how I store images. So I thought I would do a little video about how I store all my stuff. All my images are stored in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven containers. So I'll start from the smallest and then, no, seven, oh, eight, nine containers. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to start from the smallest and then work my way up to the two largest. Let me get those down. To the two largest and then you'll understand how I store images. All right, so the first one is I store the smallest of images. And yes, there's a glare on this. The, the smallest of images or the smallest words I have in the Altoid tin. These are words that will go on very small things. Like these are usually one word, you know, one word sort of things. And they're, they're small. And because they're so small, I keep them in um, an Altoid tin. So that's how I, I do the single word, um, save my single words. Then this is a container that I purchased at Michael's. I think it was for $5. I've had them for a few years. Um, this says words. And the thing that I like about it is that these are totally stackable and they don't take up a lot of space. So I really like them and they hold a lot. So here are the words that are a little bit too large that I like, you know, that are not going to fit in the Altoid tin. So these are big words, big letters, this kind of thing. You know, you just can't fit that in the Altoid tin, much as I like to try. Um, so that's what I store these kind of words in, is this right here. And if sometimes they get a little bent, but it's okay. All right, and then I have it, like I said, I have it labeled with um, the P-Touch. It says words on there. The next one are my mini pictures. These are the ones that are the small, usually, I say usually, the smallest pictures that I collect. Well, you know, things that, that are this small, the size of the end of your finger, up to... I don't know if I got any large ones in here. I don't even know. You know, stuff stuff this size. This is a uh, an arrangement that was in a some kind of a magazine where it was the wall in the living room, and the wall, the back wall above the couch, was covered with nothing but uh, pictures of floral or pictures of leaves and I couldn't decide did I want to cut them into little tiny squares or did I want to leave them like this so for the time being they are in the mini pick box but I left the arrangement whole because I'm not really sure which way I want to use it and I don't want to cut it up till I know for sure so it goes in here anyway so the rest of these are just little small pictures that I've cut off from uh, cut out from various places I really love using the back of the um Stamping Tin and Company magazines. I think this came from one of the your art journaling or Prim's magazine. And these are copies of their magazines in the back of the magazine. And they make great little pictures to add to different things. I love these. This is one of my favorite things to cut out. Um, and the rest of it is just a mishmash of different items. Nothing... Now here's a, an ephemera that I threw in there because I was going to use it on something and change my mind. It was easier to throw it in here than it was to file back somewhere else. This may be not a mini pick, but it was something, like I said, I was going to use in something else. It didn't work out, so I just threw it in here for the time being. So those are the mini pictures. All right, then I have small pictures, and these are hard plastic boxes that I think I bought. I have two of them. I actually have four. Two of them with no segments in it and then two that have like segment dividers inside them. And I think it was to store things like colored pencils or something to that effect, but I've had them a long time. And this one, I know you can't see it, but 
it won't close. It's so stuffed full. These are my small pictures. So they're a little larger than the mini pictures. And this is crammed full of stuff. Again, it's the t same type stuff. I just cut out stuff that I like visually or that I think would work in a journal or whatever. And so, see, look, this should go in the mini picture box. Let me put it in there right now while I'm sitting here doing this. And maybe this should go in there too because this is going to get lost in that all that mess. Anyway, so I just throw stuff in here as I cut it out. Some of it's fussy cut, some's not. But this is getting too full, so when it gets bulgy like this, I don't want to upgrade to a larger container because I don't want to be one of those people that has rooms and rooms and rooms of stuff and swears they're going to use it and never gets to it. So when it, um, when it gets too full, it's time to glue or purge one of the two. Well, now I shut. I got it to shut. Wow. I guess it, it's just a matter of rearrangement. <laughs> and then, again, the labeling. Because it's uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, I've had one cup of coffee, and sometimes the eyes are not as good at looking at things, so that's why I label everything. All right, so then, okay, so that's, we did the mini, the small, and then here is how I store the large, large containers. I mean, the large pictures is in this very flat, skinny, um, plastic I'd like to say this is Linus, but I don't think it is. I don't see it written on here anywhere, so I don't think it is, but it's in this uh, iris. Oh, it is iris. All right, so this is an iris container, and I think I paid either, I think I think paid $5 for this one, too, because they were on sale a long time ago. So these are the larger pictures, things that are just way too big to put anywhere else. These are large sheets, small pictures. You know, things that are not going to fit other places. I put, I, and they're, most of them are not fuzzy cut. So what I do is I collect all these. And then the ones that are the whole sheets where I, I don't know what to do with the whole sheet. I put that in the bottom of the box. And usually the cut up stuff goes on top. And I left it skinny for a reason. I don't usually work in larger journals. Um, so I left this in the small box because I don't really want to work in big, huge journals, but I still collect the pictures and then I can cut them down to something more manageable, but I want to have that option. So those are the larger pictures. Whoops. And it snaps shut and it's not bulging. <laughs> so there's my, this one says miscellaneous cutouts, but that's my large pictures. All right. So. Um, now I have one, two, three, four other containers that I collect stuff in. So I will show you what the collections are. This one is called, and it's hard to see it, Faces and Body Parts. <laughs> Sounds a little creepy. <laughs> and it's the small container like the last one. And yes, this one is Iris too. All right. Um, Carla got me started on these things. I can't remember if she calls them funny faces or what she calls them, but these kinds of faces like this where you have the, the um, eyeballs and mouths and lips that look a little odd on pasted on other faces you mix and match them and then she cut cut them and then when you flip it over you can mix and match the eyes with the faces so in order to have that you need larger images to to do on it I just thought this was such a cool idea, and I really like looking at it because it's so bizarre. All right, let's see. All right, so I have that, and I keep that in here. And then these are spare that are cut the same size that I have not gotten to yet. All right, so because body parts come in different sizes, and there's different things you might need for these kinds of books, I went ahead and made envelopes. And then label them. This one is for lips. So this has different size lips in it to do on those um, funny faces. Then I have eyes because you can mix and match the eyes. 
so there's all kinds of eyes. There's like they're thin cut strips for the eyes. Then there's just eyeballs where I like the eyebrows. That's a beautiful eyebrow. I would kill for some eyebrows. <laughs> so anyway, I have eyes in there. Then I have little heads. Now, <laughs> little heads sounds kind of strange, but little heads is for a miniature book of the of the little mix and match heads. So I collected smaller size heads in this envelope as opposed to, you know, the larger size heads. So there's little heads in here. Faces, little faces, little heads. This is miscellaneous body parts. <laughs> I just love looking at this. It just makes me laugh. All right, so sometimes you might need hands in a picture. So there are hands, there's ears, there's a face with colored hair. Sorry, the dog is barking at the cat in the background. If I open the door, it's all downhill. <laughs> so there's um, different body parts. These are mostly noses and eyebrows right now. Then I have an envelope called doodads. Doodads is miscellaneous things to doctor up the faces. This is mostly things like sunglasses and glasses, jewelry, hats, you know, um, accessories. But I just call them doodads. Then here's where all the um, images are stored. The faces, large faces, kind of smallish faces. Then the whole sheets, just like in the other container, I put those on the bottom. Not sure how I'm going to use them. I don't want to cut them up because what if I want the whole face or what if I just want the lips? Now, I don't know what to what I want off them, so I don't want to cut them up and destroy them and decide later, oh, I wish I hadn't have done that. So there you go. There's all those. And then I keep these in here. And again, it's not overstuffed. When it gets overstuffed, it's time to, what? oops, it's time to work on the books, which I have not worked on in a very long time. So, okay, so there's that one. And the next thing is I have a uh, container labeled stamps. This is not regular stamps. This is stamps that are cut from a stamp catalog that I ordered a long time ago, and they have great images in there. So this one is labeled Old Men. The reason this is labeled Old Men is because in the catalog, there's lots of pictures of old presidents and old historical figures, poets and scientists and presidents and, you know, those kind of people, and they're just old men. <laughs> so I'll put old men in the envelope here. Then I have some that are labeled Christmas. Hang on, let me take care of the dog. Sorry. All right, so um, I have all these different envelopes in here. Little mini envelopes that I learned how to make from caged fish, Carlet caged fish. And each one is labeled with a subject that came out of that catalog that there were a lot of them. And I didn't want to have to dig through all of this to find what I was looking for. If they're small enough to fit in there, they're in there. The rest of the stuff is miscellaneous stuff. Oh, the wait. I saw two guys on a bicycle. I don't know if I should put that in travel or not. Anyway, um, so these are miscellaneous stamps. Now, I did buy a bag of stamps from Hobby Lobby in the back of the store. They have down one of the aisles where you can buy bags of stamps. And I did buy some bags of stamps because I thought it was pretty cool. And I bought some stamps from Jerry Bellini's Recycle Parts for Art. I can't remember the name of her website. Anyway, so I did buy some stamps from her, and they were real cancel stamps, and they were awesome. I really enjoyed them, and I might end up buying more later. But as you can see, I have plenty here. All right, so here's my categories. I have envelope labeled flowers. There's tons of flowers in there. There's some real cancel stamps and some photographs, you know, from the magazine or from the catalog. Travel. This has planes, trains, automobiles, bicycles, anything that you can travel with. This one's bugs. And yes, there are things in the bug envelope. Oh, bugs. Look at that. Isn't that cool? All right, so then bugs, what's next? Uh, animals. Transportation. Did I do transportation already? 
Oh, travel is to foreign countries. These are foreign country stamps. Sorry. This one's transportation. Food. And Christmas. And then, of course, I have my old men. You notice there's no envelope in here. It says old women. <laughs> okay, so there's that one. Put my stamps back in here. All right, so there is that one. And then I have another kind of uh, container that I collect things in. And this is called black and white. This is, again, that hard plastic container. This is black and white. Um, I started collecting black and white stuff when I did a pocket letter exchange with in a group where the uh, subject for the month was black and white. So everybody who traded had to do their pocket letters in black and white. And that's when I started collecting black and white images. So these are um, die cuts, stamped images, doodles, photographs of doodles, copies, uh, you know, things out of scrapbook paper, tissue paper I stamped, uh, puzzle, you know, crossword puzzle pieces, UPC codes, all kinds of stuff that were stamped in uh, black and white or gray and white, that kind of thing. And I really like collecting them. I don't know why, but I just like doing um, stuff in black and white. I think we don't do enough of it. Everybody concentrates on color, but I think one of the most powerful photographs that I've seen is a photograph that is done in black and white. Um, you're not looking at the colors. You're looking actually at the subject of the photograph. And sometimes some of the most powerful photographs I've ever seen have been in black and white. So I really enjoy the black and white stuff. So that's storage for that. Then this one, I can't really explain this one. I don't use this one anymore. I need to change it. It's called Current Project. And I think, I don't even know what's in here anymore. I haven't looked at this in a long time. Oh, foil. Oh, that's right. I was going to do something with uh, foil in a book. And so I saved candy wrappers. These are wrappers from Cupcake. Cupcake uh, wrappers. You know, the inside is the paper and the outside is the foil. This is regular tin foil. Or let's see, if you're across the pond, it's aluminum foil. And then I cut out pictures of things that, that were gold and silver to do a gold and silver book. And that's in here. And I have not looked at this in forever. Maybe it's time to break this up. Anyway, so that's what's in this one. So that, other than my ephemera storage, which is in a small container on my cart from Ikea, um, this is store-bought ephemera. Most of this stuff is from Canvas Core. I divided it up to categories that I understand, you know, and that's how I store those. And those are just in a um, divider in the cart, and they stand upright, and I dig through them whenever I need to use them. So they're not in any kind of a flat container or a drawer. They sit next to me so that I can reach them easily. Okay, let's see what else. Um, I did these a long time ago, and this was because of Cat Hand and her mini morsels, uh, or mixed media morsels, sorry. Um, and I started doing these. So I did inchies, twinchies, and scraps. Uh, I got some is it Alex and Annie bracelets for Christmas gifts. And I saved the boxes because I thought they were very cool. So what I did was I took scrap paper, painty paper, and decorated the box with it all around the lids and everything. And then put on here what was on the inside. So anything that's an inchy that I was going to use, leftover painting papers and stuff that I really liked but I didn't want to get rid of, I cut them down into inchy size so that I can do inchies with them. So there's all kinds of inchies in here. And because I was afraid of running out, I made regular paper <laughs> inchies. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> all right, so there's that one. And this is the same thing repeated again with the twinchies. There's all kinds of painty, painty paper in here to do twinchies, which is a two by two inch square. And they're just sitting in here kind of languishing away. I don't know why. It defies explanation. And this is scraps. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, 
none of this makes any sense now looking back. I've had these for a couple years and now they just don't make any sense. So here is scrap paper from the Inchies and Twinchies. And again, it has a decorated box. So I'm a little anal retentive about labeling stuff so I know what's in them. And this sits on the, the uh, Ikea cart next to where I do my stuff. And I think that's... I'm looking around. I think that's how I store everything that's in some kind of a box container. So part two of this, oops, sorry. Part two of this, I will show you how I store things in my notebooks. I like storing stuff in these little containers and then I like storing stuff in notebooks. So I will do a part two with the things in the notebooks. Bye.